Welcome to 2019 Sunfish Women's North Americans. We're right here at beautiful Niantic Bay Yacht Club. And the races are just about to get started here in a few minutes. So we will get you some views of the race course, some views of the venue, let you know how everything's going. So Niantic Bay Yacht Club right here in Connecticut. We are right nestled between the Connecticut River and the Thames. And you get a little bit of current in this fishbowl and you, it really kind of loops around the whole venue and you can get some crazy kind of swirling effects. Um, we're joined here today with uh, a couple couple people here on the broadcast. You have Paul uh, Deersey, longtime Sunfish Sailor, my uh, co-host here for you. Uh, me, I am Will Kresick, uh Sunfish President, U.S. Uh, and we got Andrew Silhavy on support. He is a Yukon Sailing alum, longtime Sunfish Sailor. We have on the drone operators today are Brian Precon. He is uh, one of our really good supporters here, helping put on this this live stream, drone footage, video footage, camera footage, anything you want. He's also the Yukon Sailing alum, a couple Sunfish events. And Pete Giuliano, uh, also Yukon alum and uh, former Yukon coach, helping out. Um, so, without further ado, we'll go right into it. We're coming up on the start sequence soon, and we're looking at today, we're looking at, uh, you want to go to that? Yeah, what do we got? We got uh, clear skies, not a cloud. All right, we got a we got a nice footage of the course. Competitors are getting ready. They're milling about, getting ready for the start. Pre-start checks. They're probably looking at right now, checking out the course. They're gonna have some uh, they're gonna have some breeze right now. It looks like it's around uh, 12 miles an hour. The gust may be slightly higher. And we're looking at uh, what are we looking at for weather conditions today? Uh, I think we're we're still a little chilly, but uh, everybody seemed to be dressed for it. Uh, so I think we're ready to go there. I think we're looking at around highs of 60, low 60s, if we're lucky, and uh, those competitors are really bundled up for this Connecticut weather. Thankfully, the water's still pretty warm this time of year, so we're, uh, you know, hoping these Florida people can handle it. You know, some, we got a lot of competitors up from Florida, so uh, competitors from all over the U.S., actually, and yeah, so anyway... Um, so I think the first course, what are they going to do the first course? We got a course A to start us off. A course A, we got uh, it's a windward, leeward, windward triangle straight to the finish line. Um, sort of a reverse modified Olympic. It's a, a little bit of a funky course, but it'll hopefully separate the fleet. We'll yeah. be able to see who the top sailors are pretty quickly and keep everything uh, separate. Um, you know, the triangle mark goes right to the finish at the end, so we might have a little bit of a drag race at the finish, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, it's a drag race, and whoever's inside usually has the right, has the uh, advantage there for sure. Queen of courses. So. All right, Pete's going to put up a course for us, and we're, A, we're running course A, so we'll get a quick view of the course, give you a, a sense of what we're sailing today. So here you go. See, we start out between the race committee boat and a pin boat. We're tacking upwind to the windward mark and the offset. Sailing downwind to the gate. Competitors can choose which gate to go around. Sail upwind back to the windward mark. And then they hit that triangle mark number three off to the side. Followed straight to the finish. So that's what we're starting out with today. Race committee set a beautiful course. We're looking forward to getting some racing off. All right. What else? So. All right. He's getting right into no, the eye flag. So huh? that's the no, nah, that's the sunfish class flag. So we got a beautiful flag. sunfish yeah. flag, pink sunfish logo on the committee boat yeah. today. Uh, for the women, so that means we're in sequence now. It looks like we're under four minutes to go. We'll be uh, seeing these competitors milling about. They're doing their last second, last pre-race pre checks. 
Um, and they're, you know, looking at the course, making sure their rigging's all good before the first race of the, of the regatta. Yeah, looking for where breeze is coming in, you know, looking for puffs that they may hit right out of the start. Which side's favored? Yeah, right now we got a little bit of a north breeze, so it's coming from the Yacht Club. So they'll actually be coming closer to us as uh, the race progresses. Um, and we're looking at maybe shifting east as the day goes on. So, uh, so we'll be getting some easterly shifts maybe throughout the day, and we'll see how those competitors can figure it out. It looks like competitors are starting to figure out where they want to be on the line. Uh, with 43 sailors today, uh, that line can get pretty packed. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Um, and we're looking at tides coming in all day. So depending on how it's affecting out there, them out there, we could see them either uh, be really aggressive on the start and push that line, or we could see them get all getting pushed over the line. You know, if that's the case, we can wind up with some U flags, some disqualifications if people are over the line early too many times. All right. Yeah, should we f and feel free to comment in the live stream if you've got any uh, feedback. We'll be glad to look at it. Thanks. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely get to your comments and check those out. Here we got really a lot of competitors setting up near the boat. It looks like. Uh, it looks like the whole pin end of the line is clear. These competitors must see something that that uh, makes them all want to set up near the boat. Who do we got there? All right. Looks like we're coming up on... Looks like we're still over a minute to go. The class flag's down. There it that is. That class flag is down. That's the, the start. start. Looks like we got one belt way out in front. You got a red, white, and blue sail there. Oh, uh, it looks like 4872 coming off on the lead. That looks like um, 4872 is... Is that Kimmy? That looks like Kimmy. Kim, yeah. Kimmy Jackman out of Bantam Lake Sailing Club coming out winning that start. Let's see if that's the right, uh, the right spot, and hopefully she can hold her lead off. 16. I don't see 16. Yeah. We don't have them. So 16 got off to a very good start as well. All right. So we got, as you can see here, the fleet is splitting. Half of them are going left, half of them are going right. And wow, it really looks, this is a cool picture. You know, half the fleet going each way. It looks like the race committee set a pretty even course to start. And Let's see. Uh, you know, with this kind of wind, it's it's a little bit about who can find, clear. who can really keep that boat moving fast and and find clear air fast. Yeah, yeah especially in a big fleet like exactly. this. Exactly. So. Forty-eight sixteen. It looks like forty-eight sixteen yeah. has really uh, accelerated there. Fourteen is uh, is out there as well. All right, so what these sailors are trying to do on this upwind is they're, they're really trying to shoot out of the start, get some clear air, find a clear lane, and you know make sure that they can keep that boat moving fast. Uh, you know, trimming in nicely, working the small waves we have here today. With the wind out of the north, we're not getting too much chop, so it should be some kind of level water sailing. Um, We 
got Nancy Jaywalk up there in the top five. We've got that might be Connie Miller up there as well. It looks like eight zero three six one is doing really well off on the side. That's Gretchen. Oh, uh, all right, Gretchen Seymour. Yeah, Gretchen Seymour out of Lake Bluff, coming all the way from uh, Chicago. And that red, white, blue cell we're looking at, that could be Kimmy still holding off her lead. Let's see 30, the number. What do we got? 4872. That's Kim. 4872. She's having a heck of a leg. And 4830 is uh, Nancy, so we've got... Uh, really? Kimmy holding on. Won that start. Played it safe up the middle. And now is really keeping keep herself in the race. Looks like she's going to cross this person. She's on port heading into this... Uh, this potential boat conflict area and we'll see is she going to cross that bo other boat ah forced to tack so she tacked beneath the other boat who's this red white and blue we have down here they're staying wide we got 4830 that's that's nancy that's nancy jay work so she's in the top bunch there You can see she's leaning out over the edge. There's a little breeze, but it's not too overpowering for these ladies. So they're really able to work that boat, get it up to full speed, and, and really maximize the possible speed they can get. One of our leaders here. <laughs> oh, this is Liza. Liza. Liza from Marblehead, yeah. Liza, a somewhat local sailor. She's only a couple hours away. Sails a lot in the New England circuit, so she's familiar with this kind of weather. So that wouldn't face her. But she seems like she's doing pretty well out in front on the side. But we'll, we'll see what happens when she crosses back with the fleet. We're coming in towards the mark. We're coming up toward the mark. Let's get a, a, a pan of the view with the mark and see how these sailors are really going to come together. Generally, with a big fleet like this, you'll see a lot of the a lot of the boats off to the starboard side, and. You'll see, yeah, you can see it here on the course. A lot of the boats are off to that right side so that they can come into the mark on starboard. Right. They'll come in with the right, and it looks like a lot of them are overstanding the yeah. mark. See here, is that Liza out in front still? She must have, she caught a nice breeze up that side, and she's way out in front, at least a couple boat lengths. So Liza, what... Liza's been racing sunfish since she was eight years old. She's so she's pretty experienced yeah. in sunfish. She knows all about this boat. And she's had a pretty good run this summer too. Yeah, we're, she sailed in the Hyannis Regional, yeah. the Wilquacket Regional. She's she's we're done a lot the of sailing Yankee this duo summer. last weekend. So yeah, the Yankee she's Duo ready. I heard was blowing. Oh, so it was <laughs> we got some other boats. Six zero eight five eight. They uh jived right around that mark. That's, That's Gail, Gail Hauser. She loves this kind of breeze. Yeah, it's perfect She's for real fast in this kind of breeze. And she, you see, a couple of these competitors are jiving around that mark. They're, and there you see Liza just jived. That's Gretchen. That's Gretchen. And that's yeah, Gretchen up there. And it looks like that's Kimmy in fifth place around that mark. You had a couple of the competitors. You'll see they're going back toward the fleet to, to make sure to get clear air on this downwind with 43 boats behind you. You yeah. don't want to, you don't want that wind blocked behind you. You're fighting you. for a lane for sure. But, oh, Jesus. You can see some other boats coming in here. This looks like this could be Lindsay Stockwell in the, in the yellow and the blue sail. Yeah, and, and we're heading into the middle of the fleet here. Yeah. 
Yeah. There we go. Right, we don't have to fill it. Some of these competitors are just coming out here for the first time. So this is their first big regatta and first big race. So as we get toward the back of the fleet, some I'm sure some of these sailors are just thrilled to be out here and having fun. Now you can see here Faye Flam in the in the yellow and the blue sail. She's a somewhat local as well, local sailor, air, you know, from the area. Um, sails a lot of lasers, but just getting into the sunfish, and, uh, we see her occasionally. It's, she's a good sailor. And there's Suzanne Hume just rounding the mark right now, followed by Mary Charles. Mary Charles, a Connecticut sailor, actually. She's a uh, saved herself a little bit for this regatta, sitting out massive hog and part of the Yankee duo. Alright. And here you can see the Yacht Club. And our you know, that's where we are and we're streaming from the Yacht Club and this beautiful shot of the ladies going downwind. So you can see these great shots with a Mavic Pro DJI uh, drone, and the, you know, really you can the drone footage is absolutely spectacular. You can see the whole bay here in the background of these of this race course. And it looks like a lot of them are rounding the lured mark. It looks like they're a lot of them are going to that starboard gate. Seems to be a little favored. We heard uh, they might be issuing a course change for the next race. So th these lays must be seeing that that side of the course is a little bit favored. You see the rest of the fleet coming down behind the, this group. That looks like Lindsay Stockwell in the red boat with the yellow and blue sail. She it looks like she's in uh, about eighth, ninth place around there. With 43 boats, you got a lot of lot of sails blocking wind downwind. So when these ladies round, they're gonna want to. Pay attention to that when they go back upwind. In, guys, once again, you're here at Niantic Bay Yacht Club for the 2019 Sunfish Women's North Americans, and we have 43 boats out on the water right now racing this event, and it's going to be a tight event. We're looking forward to some good racing, some good video, some good competition.
it looks like the course has shifted super right so hopefully uh we can get a little bit of you know a little bit of a course change for the next race but See a lot of these ladies going up win on starboard. Looks like these are our leaders out in front. Is that oh someone's already around. So we got It's, it might be Liza. Four, eight, four, three, four, three, three. That's Liza. She held off her lead. She's way out in front and first. And coming up on the last windward mark now. That. Let's see if that's Gail right behind her. Yet once again, Gail loves this kind of breeze. She uh, excels in the once it's above 10 miles an hour. Looks so like Liza tacking over to port, going up that mark, and she'll be rounding it real shortly. That, yeah, that's Gail There's Hausler Gail. holding yeah. off second place. She's a favorite in this event. I think she's a four-time women's champion. So, and she's trying to she's trying to win herself a fifth time, a fifth championship. Eight zero three six one in uh, third place. That's Gretchen, Gretchen holding off her lead as well. That's Nancy. Yeah. That looks like it's Nancy J work. She's coming off a strong finish in uh, Masters this yeah. past, this that, uh, what, two weeks ago? No, Recently. About a month ago. It was, a, it was the Nancy Nancy show. It was she second Masters. place in yeah, Masters, second, yeah. beating out a tough lead uh, down in Lewis. This is going to be close between her and, that, and, and Gretchen. It looks like Gretchen's tacking over as well. And they're racing up to this orange mark. It looks like Nancy's going to get around it first here. And they can head downwind. Well, actually, they're on the triangle now, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, where are, are they heading? Are they heading to the triangle now? It looks like eight four seven two just rounding. So these girls, they're heading. They just round this windward mark in the offset, and then they're heading down to the triangle mark, jive mark, and then go straight to the finish from there. Eight one four oh six. That looks like it's Beth. Beth is from uh, Davis, Island. Davis Island. Yeah, yeah, Davis Island Yacht Club coming up from Florida. And here's some of the leaders rounding the mark. Oh, this is the second group uh, rounding the windward mark. I think. Yeah, it looks like this is Lindsay Stockwell coming up on the windward mark now. She's one, two. So it looks like she's in 12th place around the mark, followed closely by 83100. <laughs>
This is uh, a middle group of boats here, coming up on the Windmore Mark still. Looks like, what number is that? Eight zero seven two six. Be bringing up the end of this group. That's okay. And four three zero four. That's four three zero. Uh, forty three forty seven. That's uh. 40, that's got to be Hannah Wisniewski, right? Nope, Hannah Wisniewski is 4348. Hannah Wisniewski is no star out there. 4347 is a new sailor. She, this is her first regatta. She's Alex Trufant. She's from uh, the Yukon Sailors. All right, we've got somebody hitting it. Looks like that's the first place crossing right now. Heading towards the finish. Yep. Right there, she's just, it's, it's between the boat and the white ball. There's a white ball to the right of the boat. There you go. Looks like that must be Liza finishing now. She's finishing, you'll see her finish to the left of this boat up here. As soon as she crosses that boat, she'll uh, be pretty close to the finish. And then we'll get you some results from the first race and break it down. Can we pull up a? Uh, can we pull up the course again? Yeah. So just a refresher. They just went around. A lot of the competitors went around. Are going around Mark One, One and now, and the top leaders went around boat three, and they're heading down to the finish between the race committee boat and uh, Mark. So that's what we're looking at right now. Top competitors just wrapping right. Buoy three and are heading downwind. Still a pretty competitive fleet. Um, lots of uh, lots of people in the top group. Maybe ten sailors in the top group. I think. You know, if we had to bunch them together. Yeah, there's a lot of sailors that came out this weekend that uh, have a lot of skill and com can compete with anyone on any level. So these top sailors are fantastic, fantastic skilled and... Now we're up at the jive mark here. You can see some of the other competitors. They really want to get inside here so that they get clear air heading down to the finish. Usually this mark is real important. Inside boat gets first first dibs to go around. Other boats have to give them buoy room. And when you get inside, you can really accelerate. You see how that front boat just took right off and has a gap now in, in front of that outside boat. That looks like that's uh, Bernadette rounding now. Middle of the fleet. It's really tough on this last leg to pass people because you really have to work the waves and hope that you can get around, block someone's wind, and really kind of, uh, you know, get lucky a little bit to pass someone on the last reach. Get a good puff. Otherwise, 
the, the results are set on this last leg pretty much. You can see they all kind of line up and it's almost a little bit of a parade to the finish. Makes it easy for the race committee to score them. They can't relax on that last downwind. Too many people relax and lose boat position, so if they, you got to stay focused. Yeah, it's really easy to lose a boat because you're not paying attention, not not reading the wind, not right, not watching competitors behind you blocking yeah. your wind. So you see here, 40, uh, the red, white, and blue sail coming in on the mark. Is that wave Looks like this is Melissa Conway in the in the boat with the green hull, followed closely by uh, 88552. That's Rosemary. Rosemary from uh, Sarasota, all the way up from Florida. She uh, she's just happy to survive without flipping in this breeze, and she <laughs> loves the light air. So she's yeah. hoping the wind dies off a little bit toward the afternoon. But uh. they eating lunch on the course. So we got three eight six eight approaching that mark, that jibe mark now. That's that's Aliana. She's a Yukon sailor, freshman. Uh, did some high school sailing down in Annapolis, and they're getting her out early on the semester, coming out to Women's North Americans. A little bit of a trial by fire. See how she does, you know. Exactly. Try out the new skippers. <laughs> I think she's just happy to be out here experiencing a great group of gals and uh, getting to meet some people and getting some sailing experience. That's Kathleen from That's Kathleen from Team Florida. Yeah, she's only been at this uh, for a couple of years, so it's good for her. I think she's just happy to finish. That's what she told us pre-race. She said, I'm just happy if I finish the race. So good for her. I think she's actually beaten a couple boats too. followed by 4355. That's got to be Mary Jane Kresik uh, approaching the Jai Mark. She's actually beaten someone. And she I know she was a little tentative doing this regatta, but I managed to convince her to come out. So uh, good for her. She's actually beaten a couple boats. I know she likes the heavier wind, but uh, you know, she never sailed off a lake before. So like a lot of these ladies, it's a little bit of a learning curve. A little, Yeah, she said she actually just picked up the sport a couple of years ago and uh, you know, really likes the sailing down there in Florida with all the other ladies down there. And that's great for her. So, got some different people out there. Yeah, right in here where we are. We're feeling a lot of wind at our back. Sounds like we've had some finishers not finish on the correct side or correct between the correct pins. So we'll see how that plays in this whole uh, county. Yeah, with a lot of a lot of ladies who aren't very experienced here, you can see some of that sometime. One person goes to the wrong side of the finish line, and everyone else second guesses what they know. 
and kind of follows them, right? But it, it can happen at all levels of the gun. You know, fl- leader goes to the wrong mark, and all of a sudden the whole fleet's following him. Everybody scream, or everybody's screaming at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the conclusion of the first race, we'll uh, we're gonna check in with the PRO. We we got to catch up with him before the races and see what his thoughts are on the racing today. Great. Sorry guys, we'll get you audio in a second for the interview. Um, you can diagram it out if you want. The basic, you've got the sailing instructions. The basic idea is that uh, it gets very hard to... All right, so um, Pat, first, thanks for coming down to uh, PRO it's, for this regatta. It's my pleasure. It's, it's it's a lot of fun to me. I actually raced sunfish back uh, forty-five years ago. Oh, so this must <laughs> be uh, a little bit more special than the average uh, race for you. Then. For me, it is. It's 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 one. It's the environment. My my daughter and my grand to play with my grandchildren. Oh.
All right, so um, Todd, first, thanks for coming down to uh, PRO it's, for this It's regatta. my pleasure. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I actually raced sunfish back uh, 45 years ago. Oh, so this must be uh, a little bit more special than the average uh, race for you. Then. For me, it is. It's 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 one. It's the environment. My my daughter and my grand to play with my grandchildren. Oh, uh, very up nice. here uh, afterwards. The people here I've enjoyed very much. Uh, their professionalism, uh, their race community is really quite extraordinary. Really? But, it's, but it's, a, it's a lot of fun for me to get out and, and, and do these. I'm in the giving back period of my um, of my career. And this is this is something I get a tremendous enjoyment out of. Terrific. And what do you think about this venue? I mean, it's a beautiful site. The venue is, um, oh, for me, it's Nirvana. I'm, I'm racing in Western Long Island Sound, home of the Great Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, and coming out here in this 18 knots, I'm really just love it today, so I just love it. It's great. Not that I'm expecting 18 tomorrow. I think we'll calm down tomorrow with 16. Uh, sorry, I think it's going to be actually less than that. I think it'll be down in 12 or so tomorrow, so which will be more comfortable for a lot of the sailors here. Okay. And but their next stop is the Worlds. So I'll try to make it. If you split on 25, I'd be out there for it. Because some of those people, not all of them are qualified for it, perhaps, but some some of them are trying for it, and they have to be able to compete at that level. So we're ready to, to run a race that will race hopefully meet that, that level. Um, and what are you thinking about, like, um, length of races? I'm going to try for it. We're setting a target time of 25 minutes uh, or so. 30 minutes, 25 minutes, it's going to depend on the wind. We want to, we're targeting 12 races. We don't think we're going to get 12 races in over, um, over two days. We think it will be slightly less than that. But um, we want to run a, a, a large number of really good, really tight races for them rather than make distance runs in, sure. in, in these boats. And um, so the, the courses are, are that we have uh, our standard windward leeward, windward leeward, yep. and then we threw in an initial one with, with a uh, a reach in it. I thought if we got conditions like today, the sunfish might really enjoy it. just take off on a, on a broad reach. Yeah. And the finishes are all going to be downwind, not downwind. I'm sorry. The finishes are all going to be in a reach. Um, you can diagram it out if, if you want. The basic yep. if you've got the sailing instructions. The basic idea is that. Uh, it gets very hard to, to record 45 people coming across the line simultaneously. Downwind, you can't see it. The sail are all lined up and you're trying to read on each of the sail. Upwind is easier, but uh, then you have to play around with it in the middle of the line, finish or something like that. So if we're going to go for a um, reaching finish, which is something we learned in foils. We've been working with foil and macros and FXs recently. And um, by catamarans, by setting it up on a broad reach, crossing the fin to the wind, the finish line is actually 45 degrees to the wind off the other side of the race committee and the starting line. Uh, we can get them. Uh, if we put, we can really, really clearly see the sails. Sam, much fancy not losing anybody, uh, especially if we have the pin boat on the other side up. Up a wind a little bit. Boats are coming down, so their ideal is we will, we will lose no boats, and we miss somebody in our actual approximately where our lost them. Sure. Has yep. to figure it out. What about fleet management on the starts? <laughs> fleet management on the starts. Um, I do a lot of match racing. So I must have been more match racing than, 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 than large fleet races. But I've, I've been in, done enough of large fleet races. We are going to um, have 43 boats in the starting line. There are basically two groups of people. There are the people who are competing for the spot of the world. There is a bunch of people who are having fun. But I'm not going to speak too much problem. We will be going immediately. If we, if we get a, we're going to put the pin boat on a, an anchor. As compared to, so we can adjust rapidly uh, nice. for, for small changes in the wind direction. We're going to try to set a really, really square course. Pretty good at that. And uh, square starting line. One shot, we're going to go immediately to uh, uniform, uh, which is, of course, uh, if you're over one minute early, you get the full round. 
countries. But the advantage of that over the black flag? I never liked the black flag. I never liked it. It was introduced. I don't like it. It's a philosophical question. What if the race is thrown off? It takes it the whole what continues to the next race thing. The uniform, <laughs> uniform flag basically accomplishes the same thing, except it doesn't winnow the fleet out. You get to, if you make your mistake, you lost it, but you can get right back in again if you go to a general recall. Nice. Yeah. Right. Thanks so for our viewers, the difference is the black flag, even if there's a general recall, you're still not eligible for that reason. Mm -hmm. okay. And for that matter, we're going to attempt to avoid general recalls. I'd rather postpone. When I see, if I see it's all bunched up at one end, I'm not going to bother wasting the time. We'll go right into a postponement. Square the line to the perception of where the wind is coming from. They're all bunched up one end. It doesn't matter. I can sit there with the wind sticks all I want. Yep. If, they, if they perceive that end of the course as being a favorite way to go, I will perhaps make the other end slightly wind favored to square everybody out across the line so we have a good separation across the line. Terrific. We look forward to uh, seeing a lot of sailing tomorrow. So, looking forward to the drones. Get a good shot of me while I'm at it. Oh, we will. And uh, we're looking for. Um, um, some, some great, we're hoping for some great conditions. The, the, the host club here has been incredibly accommodating and the all right. All right. We're coming up on uh, three and a half minutes to the next start. Race They're two. Already in sequence. And we're working on getting new results for the first race. We'll put those up as soon as we can. But it looks like Liza and Gail were the top two. Liza Genovese and Gail Hausler is the top two competitors in that first race. You can see uh, 4304 sailing right in the middle of our picture here, the red, white, and blue sail. You can see that's the start line right there. You, the closer boat is the pin boat, and the far boat is the committee boat. Right now they have that pink sunfish flag up and the preparatory flag up, so we're about two and a half minutes to the start. At one minute you'll see that, that blue preparatory flag to the right of the sunfish flag go down, signaling one minute to the start. You see 4355 right there in the picture. That's Mary Jane, Mary Jane Kresik, and 80858. She was, that's Linda from Sarasota Sailing Squadron. How do we know if last names here? Where are the last names? Real quick. I don't know. It's supposed yeah. to be first name, name pronunciation. one minute you can see the preparatory flag go down and with one minute to go these sailors are going to set up just below the start line and with this view we'll really be able to see if there's a sag or if there if some of these competitors are aggressive and out in front It looks like from the drone footage, we can see uh, that they're definitely a little bit more aggressive than last time. But we'll see as we approach the start. That's 30 seconds right there. As we approach the start, we'll see them get up to this line and really try to Push jostle right the position. It. Yeah. You know, this start's so important with 43 boats on there. Exactly. We'll hope to create a, a little gap to port so you have some, some room to accelerate. And that's, we're coming up on 10 seconds right now, 10, 9, 
you'll see that sunfish class flag go down at go. Looks about four seconds. There it is, go. And you see these boats really accelerate right off the start line. Everyone's clear by a mile. You can see 4704, that's Lindsay. You can see you, some of these boats really shoot out in front. Look, there's 16. I believe that's Marguerite, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think Marguerite's 21. 14 here, that's Mary Charles, right close to the boat. There's 4304. That's, That's Katie from Sebago, 4875. the gate. Don't be sailing through that again on the way down with. Looks like Gail's got a pretty good lead going on there. Though there are three boats in the top pack right now. Looks like Gail, Liza. Nancy's in there. Lindsay's in there. Oh, that's 43433. Yeah. Four, three, three. That's Liza again, right? Yeah, and Gail are right up there. Oh, they, they must be liking this breeze because they're right up there again. Yeah. They went 1 2 the first race. And, and both started at great clean starts. Yeah, you can see they're a little, little bit ahead of the rest of the fleet right now. They uh, seem to be the top two competitors thus far. the two red, white, and blue scales in the middle is the Lindsay Stock with the blue
All right, it looks like a lot of these ladies have rounded the offset, and now they're heading downwind. Once again, with this many boats in the fleet, you really got to make sure you get clear air on, in, on the downwind. That's rough in the middle of the pack, for sure. Look, the, looks like the first four or five boats are in free and clear, so not too bad on this race. Yeah, those leaders had a really good first upwind leg, and... Uh, really managed to pull away and that'll really help them stay ahead on the downwind thanks for bearing with us while we fix the audio problems make sure you uh, refresh your streams periodically and uh, stay with us yeah it looks like Nancy rounded by herself way ahead of the rest of the fleet so Uh, looks like here's some of the leaders. You see Bernadette right there in the middle with the dark yellow and blue sail. And Lindsay Stockwell in the yellow and blue off to her right. Right here, we're right over Melissa Conway, 84765. She's doing really well up there in the middle to the top side of the fleet. Mm -hmm. She d doesn't have a ton of sunfish experience. Started sailing in college and just picked up sunfish from there. But... Uh, she's really learning the boat and having a good time at a regatta like this. Looks like that's Marguerite rounding the lured mark now, yeah. followed closely by, uh, looks like... Looks like it's Melissa Solnick oh. from Sebago, yeah, Sebago Canoe Club, New York. She's a, an arrow sailor, I believe, um, and come out for sunfish, followed closely by Lindsay. Now we have 4820, 4820, that's, uh, oh, I don't know. 21, 4821 is Sonia, if we've got, if we've got the number a little off. Let's see. 4872, that's Kim. Followed closely by 4304 and Bernadette behind her. We have So, okay. Beautiful shot of the whole course here. You can see the ladies all over, tons of boats. Makes it really hard to find that breeze. Yeah, that middle pack is staying tight together. Sun's out, but uh, it is pretty chilly out here. This Connecticut weather really uh, is catching up to some of these sailors, and us in particular, the broadcast booth, it's a little chilly. But they're out on the water. With, uh, you know, hopefully the water stays warm, and uh, hopefully the, 
all these Florida people, the people from down south, everywhere else, they you know dress appropriately and make sure they have the right equipment for the job. Looks like they had a 50-50 split on the gate. Race committee's telling us people chose the, the both gates evenly, which tells us that the sailors are seeing a pretty even uh, current and a pretty even wind across the course. Right, and the course is set up square, so good stuff. Looks like here, bottom of our screen, you can see the yellow and blue Lindsay Stockwell. She's hoping to do really well in this regatta. Uh, she finished third place a couple years ago in Mid-Antic 2016. And some of our other top competitors, I think that looks like it's uh, you know, Kimmy up there. And 6058 crossing Lindsay. Oh, let's see. Lindsay made her tack. Six. That's, uh, they're, they're heading into the windward mark right now. Four, Lindsay, fo Gail followed by Lindsay. You see four, th four, eight, three, zero. That's Nancy, ha uh, Nancy J work coming into the windward mark. It looks like Lindsay had a good leg. She managed to catch Nancy. Gail caught Nancy. It's a tough top of the fleet. Uh, it looks like Gail in, in first place, followed by Lindsay, and then 4830, that's Nancy. So those girls had a really good up, uh, second upwind. And then Liza in fourth place, and followed by Marguerite, just rounding the mark now. Rounding, heading to the offset, rounding the offset. Jennifer, 16, is uh, doing really well as well. She's from Coast Guard, I think, right? Yeah, Jennifer Lane, uh, she, she's a former Coast Guard sailor. She's uh, graduated in 2015, so still young. And that college sailing really paying off. A lot of experience in college sailing. Here we got 4729. That's Faye. Faye up there in the front of the fleet. She's having a good race. Followed closely by Kimmy. Kimmy Jackman. Uh, sorry, that's Sonia. Sonia. Uh, Sonia's coming up from North Carolina. Not thrilled about the weather, but she's happy to sail in whatever conditions 
you know, come her way. Real light sailor, so she loves the light breeze. Probably hoping it dies off a little bit more than this, but she's still doing pretty well. That's Ursula Olsen in We have some action at the windward mark. We had a, a boat flip at the windward mark and quickly right themselves and get back on course. Four, that looks like Lee Parks. Lee Parks flipped at the windward mark and managed to right it. Apologize, that, that wasn't Lee that flipped at the Windmore Mark. Lee Parks, 5785, is leading that second big pack of boats. Doing well, hoping to keep some good air and finish top of that second second heat. You can see from this view, you see those top two boats followed by three more, and then a whole second pack heading at, in after that. Last boat's just rounded the offset and heading downwind to the triangle mark. Once again, after this triangle mark, they're heading down to the finish in between the race committee and the mark. All right, well, it looks like we're, we're uh, just about to finish. Here are our leaders. You see Gail Hauser Gail managed Hauser. to hold off Lindsay and followed closely by um, White Sail. That, that means uh, Nancy Jaywork lost another boat. These are our finishers here. Oh, no, that looks like Gail Hausler, followed by Lindsay Stockwell. Lindsay's got to be happy with That's that Liza second place. She, she didn't finish great after the first one. That's Liza, yeah. Okay. So Liza, third place. 4830 just edging out 71. Oh. 4830 just edging out so that's Nancy holding off, uh, Marguerite. Yeah. Those are some top competitors. Jennifer. This 
16, that's Jennifer Lane, followed by 4729. 4729 is Faye Flam. She's got to be happy. She's at the top 10. 4820 is uh, Nancy Jaywork. Uh, Sonia, sorry, Sonia. Sonia. 4820 is Sonia. So she's holding out. I think that's like seventh place. First pack of boats that just finished. Yeah, so we'll be moving into pack two here. That's a pretty good and pretty competitive pack uh, to just to win that race. That's Lee Parks coming in. She's got a lot of experience in big regattas like this. There it is, she's finishing now, right next to that white mark. 4860. That's Marta. That's Marta coming in right behind Lee Parks. 53100. That's Ursula Olsen coming in next. And you can really see all these competitors are really, they're just trying to stay to the right and then they're coming straight downwind just to make sure that they stay, they get some clear air on that last little bit so that they don't get past. Here's 14, Mary Charles, having great race. She's ahead of a good number of boats, probably about 25 boats ahead of. Four eight seven two. That's uh, that's Kimmy. She just finished. She, she was up there at the beginning of the race, and I don't know what happened to her throughout. She must have lost a couple of boats and made a mistake here or there, and it can cost you in a big a couple shifts, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, one 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 miss shift or one mistake can cost you a lot in a big fleet like this. And we just uh, just spoke to race committee. They're going to be updating the scores online, so we'll be able to get those scores. On feed um get some live up results soon we're working on that now so we're working on that now and that's me that just finished seven seven three eight eight She's up from Sebago, Young, Sebago Canoe Club in the New York City. Really tentative going into this regatta. I was worried that she wouldn't do well enough, but here she is. She's beaten 20 boats or so. 81022, that's uh, that's Lynn, Lynn Randall. She's okay. having a good, good race too. Good for her. She's She just learned to sail a few years ago and with the, with the Florida crew and has been doing these big regattas for a little while. This is a close finish now between those three boats. It looks like 76039 pulled out the win, followed by 75016. 75016, that's Kat, Kat Stavola. Stavola. Uh, the wife of Pete Giuliano here on the creek. He's rooting for her. That's hard for her. Yeah, cat beat 15 boats. It's... And that's Tara, 81333. Tara Schwein Schweinsfire. 88522. That's uh, Rosemary. Rosemary from Sarasota, another Florida crew. Four three five zero. Oh, that's got to be. Uh, that's one of the boats loaned from Simon. Four three. That's Melissa from. Ah, uh, that's Melissa, the Aero Sailor. And 
that's Susan Berg. Uh, sorry, not Susan. Susan from Sarasota. That's 4331. That's Kathleen up from Sarasota, Florida as well. She tried sunfish and loved it and just want to come up and participate in a regatta like this. Good for her. 4875. It's Katie. Katie also uh, from Sebago yeah, in Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. Good for her. They're out here racing, tough fleet, and getting around the course and having a good time. Yeah. Getting some experience. Will, why don't you let it know we're going to switch over to the interview with Gail? All right, we're going to cut to an interview with Gail, our winner from this previous race. Let's see what she ha thought about uh, the racing coming into today. Right here, so like the first one out here on the on the beach, getting ready for the practice day. Yeah. How you feeling? How you like? Uh, it's a little breezy, yeah. a little cold. I'm from Florida, so oh, okay. but it's okay. We're welcome. And jokingly said I had to be careful what I asked for because we're like getting ready to come and sweating. And, okay. So, so this is actually nice. Well, it's New England, so, you know. Right. Just wait a couple minutes, it will change. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, you guys are going to have some flat water today and some big, bigger breeze. Did you check the forecast for the rest of the weekend at all? I did. It's a okay. little lighter tomorrow and Sunday. Take that one day at a time. And how long have you been sailing the sun? Since I was a kid. Oh, wow. So a long time. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're born into it and go right uh, in right. sailing all over your life? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Tell, tell us a little about your boat there. Well, it's a Sail and boards up okay. um, from Florida. I had some friends bring that up for me. Nice. Um, so I don't know. I've sailed it in a couple of NAs and it's really, really fast. So I mean, it's not the sailor, it's the boat. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully it still has its magic. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. Well, good luck out there this weekend. Look forward to seeing you on the race course. All right. Thank All right, you. Yeah, bye. All right. Last year was in Texas. Last year was in Austin. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I want to say we were in the 30s there. That's nice. Uh, but that was, a, that was a good show. And we did Shelter Island um, a couple of years ago. And that was a big turn. That was the North East. There's, there's these, the rest of the world, ladies, 
All right, well, they set the course for the next race. We'll talk a little bit about ourselves. I'm Will Kresick, right here, uh, USCA president and UConn alum, and we're working hard to host the regatta today. And I'm here with Brian Precon. Yeah. With uh, Lifted Sea, uh, we're doing all the uh, aerials and all the live streaming. we got Pete to my left, he's the uh, man behind the scenes. <laughs> we'll get him, on the, get him on the mic in a little bit. He's a little camera shy, but we'll get him out. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're having a great day out here. Such a beautiful venue down in Niantic Bay. I mean, you can't ask for a better day out here. Um, yesterday, I got to talk with a bunch of competitors, did some interviews, um, and it was great. Everyone was so excited to be here. The atmosphere was incredible. People were just so happy. To just You know, everyone's seeing each other again, re 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 reuniting. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, the thing about the Sundish class is everyone's super friendly, and when you do the regattas, you get to know all of the same competitors. You're seeing them again at every regatta. You're competing against the, a lot of the same people, and every regatta can sometimes turn out to be just like a big party where you get to see your old your friends again. It was great. You know, it was hugging, happy, and you know, everyone's coming over from all around the country to, to race. And what we're getting is, uh, like we're going to start the sequence in about a minute, um, so yep. we'll be probably getting back up in the air and uh, get some more aerial footage. But uh, this, this, uh, this regatta, is, it's awesome. You know, as you can see, the fleet's pretty tight. Um, we got some good racing. The yeah, we got a lot of people out there, a lot of competitors. And lot. Yesterday, we saw some pretty big breeze, uh, you know, gusts in the 30s. So it was nice to, today that the wind calmed down a little bit. Um, made it manageable for us right here because we got we got a lot of moving parts. We got, right. <laughs> we got drones in the air. So. And, and we're lucky right now. It didn't calm down too much, right? We've seen in the forecast maybe potentially yeah. like three miles an hour to gusting four, yeah. and right now it's still holding strong. We're seeing a little bit like eight miles an hour, and we'll see what happens going into the afternoon. Hopefully, it doesn't die yeah, that much, yeah, but ho holds hopefully, out. it holds and out. We did see that it did clock to the right, which was forecasted, mm -hmm. um, and when it was clocking to the right, it was going to die. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really seen. We had a little velocity down. When it clocked to the right, right, but, uh, it's it's holding like you said better than anticipated, which is great, great, mm -hmm. great racing. Mm -hmm. So we're yep. going to be going into race number three of twelve for the for regatta. So uh, you know that's that's really good. Yeah, we'll see. It's I mean it's about noon, so they can get a few more races in. Yeah. Uh, race committee and PRO said they were aiming for thirty to forty minute races. So uh, if we can get a couple races a day, that would be you know uh, that would be good. We're now in sequence, uh, so we're within five minutes to the start. A lot of these ladies are going to sail around, look for the, you know, where do they want to set up. They'll be thinking about what the best spot on the course is for catching the wind. Yep. They'll yep. be thinking about the current, which is now going to start be picking up a little bit as low tide was around 10:45, and and like we said earlier, the breeze clocking to the right a little bit. Um, Never mind. Mike was off all the time. Yours was? Yeah. Oh, well. And this doofus over here lost... Uh, <laughs> we had the mic off the whole muted. time. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, everyone, this is Brian Precon, <laughs> lift and see operator, yep, yep. Who, who doesn't know how to deal with equipment. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're learning here now. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning on the job. We're coming up on... Uh, we're just under four minutes to the start. Right. And... Uh, you'll see the, the sailors milling about a little bit. They're looking yeah. for the cor where they want to be on the course. Uh, we we were talking about how the wind shifted right, the right. A bit throughout the yep. day, uh, and with that we were projecting the dying breeze. breeze yeah. But right now it's still holding up at around eight miles an hour, and hopefully it stays that way. So. Yeah. And what we're seeing is uh, the first race we had a little bit of uh, almost a shyness to the line. Uh, people weren't as aggressive. Race number two, we saw a lot more. Uh, you know, everyone was tighter on the line, less level of line sag. Um, you know, hopefully this start, it looks like everyone's kind of already up there at the line from this angle. Um, so the fleet's definitely getting a little more comfortable. We're going into race number three of 12. Um, so everyone's kind of getting getting their, the feel for it again. Looks like we're about two and a half to the start.
Give me the two minute. And we're coming up on two minutes now. Let me know what two minutes Three, is. Two, one. And we're at two minutes to the start. So at one minute, you'll see one of those flags on the race committee next to the sunfish flag. They'll, they'll lower that blue flag, which is the P flag, and that's one minute to the start. These competitors know the sequence, and they know, you know, one minute you want to be setting up on right. the line, finding your spot, clearing your lured hole so that you can accelerate off the start line. What I mean by that is you're going to try to try to stay away from boats to your lured yep. side so that you can bear off, get a little with five seconds left roll, on the, flat on the start. And, and, uh, Slingshot yourself out off the line until yeah. you get a clear lane it, of breeze. Especially with yeah. this many boats on the start line, you it's really want to get out in front quickly. Yeah, if you're so you if you're buried clear. on this, you got to get out early. You know, there's no really yeah. yeah. You're Once you're for buried, a it can be tough. You, yeah. you really sometimes you get forced way outside to the sides of the course if you get buried, and it's it can be tough to find wind. Here's one minute now. Boom. Yep, and we just saw the flag go down there. Yep. So one minute you can see a bunch of the sailors setting up on the side of the line. We'll see how aggressive they want to be. Right now it's an open line, so some sailors could cross and do a little bit of a dip start. But from what we've seen today, they haven't been super aggressive. We're coming up almost on 30 seconds now. We have about 33 left. And that's 30 seconds now. And it's really important at this stage to really keep the uh, the water flowing underneath your Can floor. Can you see who boat. that is pushing the line? One person is up there close to the start. They they don't want to get pushed over, but they're getting close. And we're, we're about 15 seconds now. Yep, you'll see the boat starting to load up. You'll see the sail stop to luff and uh, fill up with um, the breeze and getting ready we're for the start. We're coming up on this about five. There, ready? Three, two, one. Uh, and we'll see the flag go down. There, there it is. is. That's, That's the start. start. And it looks like start. we're all clear. This is race number three. You can see Lindsey Stockwell on that blue and yellow right there close to on the line. Yep. I think that was 16 right up in front, too. That's Jennifer Lane. Yep. Jennifer Lane up there. That's Great start by her. Yeah, and that's and that's a that's the lane that you're looking for. Just 4860. That's that's Marta, I believe. Yeah, Marta Clues 4860, a Yukon sailor. She started sailing a few years ago in Sunfish and really yeah, coming really to took her off. own. Had yep. a fourth place in Monantic a couple years ago in the women's NAs and has really been just learning and learning. Yeah, and if, with a fleet like this, you're gonna just you're just gonna learn a lot faster because you're you know having the comp competition you're looking for. You're getting a lot of practice. Yeah, I'm not sure right here. It seems like everyone's starting to luff up a little bit. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like they could have uh, called a general recall. We'll get confirmation from that in a minute. Hang on, I think I see a postponed flag. Ah, uh, looks like they postponed the race. They, they must have been able. They must uh, not been able to see the line from our angle. You could see in front, but from them, maybe they had a couple boats blocking the start line. Yeah. Can you see the committee boat? I can't see. Orange and blue, that's the pin boat. What's the... So it looks like the wind died on the start line, and they haven't they haven't started. They they threw in a postponement. No, 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 I don't think they have one. Oh, they haven't thrown Yeah, they're racing. They're racing. Yep, there's just a little less velocity oh, right like now. Okay, yeah. so what we're seeing is that they're racing. The race is on. It's just with this many boats and the the wind just dying out right after the start. Yeah. They're struggling to keep boat speed and full sails. And yeah, we were, you can actually see the fleet starting to split here a little bit both ways. Yeah. And we were worried about that. That's what we were just talking about um, a couple minutes ago, which is about the breeze clocking to the right and then dying. And so we were really happy and fortunate to have the breeze this long. So let's see if hopefully this, you know, doesn't get any lighter. Um, because mm -hmm. then you got to take in consideration current and uh, and just the breeze dying out. So yeah, you see a bunch of boats here going off to the right on Port Tack and a bunch going left. They're trying to get to the outside yep. of the race course. Yep. If they 
if if they understand big fleet racing is the wind doesn't just fill in from nowhere it fills in from the this, edges yep. of the course correct so you want to really you think about which side of the course you want to be on go to that side of the course and that way you have a shot at getting the first breeze yeah and i'd love, I'd love to see breeze. which you know what numbers are on the right and what numbers are on the left so we can really uh, you, can, of... you can actually see from this view very few boats are in the middle you have a two a couple that are going back toward the middle but a lot of the boats are trying to stay to the outside of the course so we'll come and check on the guys And this is Emily Wagner out on the right side, right side of the, of the course. course. She's yep. looking pretty good, keeping some boat speed of full sail. But you can see these skippers are now in the boat. They're, a lot of them are on their knees in the boat, trying to make sure that they can keep a slight leeward heel to help keep their sail full in the light breeze. Yep. You can see this 53100, five, zero, zero. that's Ursula Olsen. She's been doing well today, too, in her boat, keeping a little bit of leeward heel, keep that wetted surface down, and the boat accelerating forward with a full sail. Yeah. And more, it's yeah. going to be good to see how these sailors just uh, adjust to this velocity change because we just went from a really good breeze where we were all hiking out. Now we're inside the boat. So let's see if any, you know some other competitors that maybe were a little bit lighter um, are moving up in the in the in the right. right a here. different, a completely different conditions yeah. at the drop of a dime. It yeah. changed. And here, this is a port starboard. Okay. It looks like the port boat is barely going to cross oh, the starboard. Yeah. Five, eight, seven, eight, five. That is, I don't have that number. I'll write it down. Oh, that's Lee Parks. Lee Parks crossed on port, crossed Marguerite. That's 71, Marguerite. Go in. 60858. That's a close one. It looks like there's a little t move. Of a tiller. But, uh, Let's see if she hails. I, I, I don't think so. A lot of these women, they, you know, they're they're let each other yeah. go. It's yeah. a friendly competition. They probably said maybe Marguerite didn't want to tack over. Maybe, maybe the, you know, she wanted to keep going True. that way. True. As, as a, and as a, uh, someone on starboard, you know, you could tell if you don't, you can always duck the boat. You yeah. Know, so if, Marguerite if maybe course, wanted to keep going on yeah. port and didn't want the other person tacking on top of them. Correct. So she let the other competitor go. And, yeah. Uh, you know. Yep. She could have been seeing something else upwind that she was trying to work towards, and the last thing she needs to do is someone to tack underneath her and try to leap out her out. Mm -hmm. So. It looks like 43100, that's Ursula Olsen again. It looks like she's having a little bit of trouble with some of the waves keeping her sail full. And here she, oh, she's tacking now and hopefully a good roll. Let's see. A little bit of roll and flatten and hopefully she can get her boat speed back up. Wait to say a little pressure to the left. Yeah. It looks like we're seeing from shore a little bit of pressure building on the left, left. side. Let's yeah. see if that pans out for them. And we had, you know, the two, uh, the seven zero seven six zero three nine um, out on the right. Emily yeah, it was Emily Wagner. Correct. So we'll see how, you know, if this lefty fills in, how she man, you know, makes out on that if she gets buried or not. Okay. So it looks like we got a couple of people trying to bang the left side of the course. Bang the yeah, corner. let's see. I mean, if, if the wind fills in from the left side, those people can be in really good position. But yeah. going that far I mean, outside look the at this, race Look at the separation we got risk. here. This is, yeah, it, when you're talking about fleet management and, and racing in a big fleet, you kind of, you know, a big rule of thumb that I like to follow is keep, uh, if you're if you're in the lead or trying to hold off a, a side of, uh, of competitors, keep them in between. If you draw an imaginary mer mer line, um, off your centerboard and off your tiller and keep them in that quadrant off the back corner and it basically if anything happens in terms of wind shifts or anything like that you can manage them once they start getting ahead of you um, or, or uh, further up uh, windward it's a little bit harder to manage them uh, because of mm -hmm, any, any mm -hmm, shifts in the wind mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it looks like the race committee is considering an abandonment with yeah. this light breeze. Um, we'll see what they decide. Uh, right now, we're seeing the boats really spread out over the course, but if the wind dies out too much, they will have to abandon. With, with no wind, it could be really tough, kind of unfair race. So yeah. We'll see what we'll see what ha- the race committee decides. And I don't know, Will, if you if you heard earlier. Um, oh, they are. Did they make the decision yet or no? And they're going to uh, they're going to call it off. Okay. So it looks like the judge has decided that the race is not fair at this point, and he's going to call it off. You know, that's always tough when you're in a position like this because, as a judge, do you do you risk calling it off and it really could have come back, the wind could have come back, could have filled in, it could have been a fair race, or do you make that call that to say, oh, this isn't fair, let's uh, abandon. Let's abandon. Yeah. And it kind of stinks for some of the top competitors. You could be in that position oh, yeah, before yeah. when you're out in front having a good race and yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm in a great yeah, position. If and you're, then all of a sudden if you're in the back, you're happy, race. right? But, <laughs> but if you're in the but, front, you're, you're, you're frustrated. Right, but that's—I mean—that's part of sailing. Um, it's all part of the sport. It's about being fair and being competitive, right? Um, this is a really self-governed sport. Um, not too many big, not too many races have umpires. Um, it's, we're really fortunate to have umpires here and have a great. Just a, a one on the water for Rule 42 yes. for the most part. But there he is. Yep, we got him right here. He's just letting that's... the competitors know that the uh, race has been abandoned. So uh, everyone's going to sail back to the starting line. And, and hopefully reset. we'll be able to get a, a st- yeah. another start in. And especially during this time, you know, uh, you can see how you did um, in terms of reading the course and where you are on the, uh, on the course to see how well you did um, and to basically learn from it, right? So if you were in the back, if you were in the back of the, the pack on that one, you say, okay, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're in the lead, you can just, just take notes and say, okay, I was doing everything right. I adjusted to that wind velocity because um, we did see those, those the ladies come inside the boat more. Right. Um, they're handling life a little bit differently. So, oh, you know, this, this is good. It's almost like a little practice race they got, right? So once the, you know, kind of settles back in, they can... Uh, yeah, and hopefully they, they get a little breeze out there and they can set a fair course. Yeah. Uh, maybe part of what they were seeing is a little bit of the breeze was coming off the complete wrong direction, might have been turned into a drag race. Yeah, yeah. And so let's see, maybe the race committee can, uh, uh, you know, set a, a fair upwind and we can get another race in. And yep. uh, yeah, now Brian and I are joined by our other correspondent, uh, Paul Deersey, longtime sunfish sailor from the area. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's good, it's good to have everyone out here. Good crew. And and one thing, just to just kind of talk about race management at this stage as a competitor, I think uh, you know if they, like I said, take back what you you know, got from this race, but also now you're going back to that starting line, really focusing on what the wind's going to do, and also what the course, you know, how they're they're moving the course. Um, so if there's any big wind shifts and they're moving the marks, you really got to pay attention to that. Okay, so. Staying near the start, you can you can hear almost thing, you can hear things. You can see the flags come up when they they're ready to get going. You know, it's really you know at this kind of level you want to be really paying attention, right? You don't want to be sailing off anywhere. So it's uh, you know all these all these top ladies are, are going to be doing that to uh, make sure their heads in the game. Cause we're still early, we're still early in the regatta. It's still anyone's regatta. Yeah, sailing can be a little bit of a sport of attrition. You got to maintain your composure. Maintain your focus, especially in times like this when it could be frustrated that there's a postponement, frustrated that there's low wind. You have to maintain your your sense of focus. And oh, and, oh, and oh it looks are. like we got a little uh, overhead shot. This is uh, yeah, this is our drone location, our, our filming location. Yeah. You'll be able to see us right in here. Yep, give us a wave. <laughs> yeah, so this is the great. This is the venue we were talking about, the great venue, Niantic Bay Yacht Club. Um, you can see this is the breakwater out here. We set up uh, our little station out here um, so we can see the course. And then you see behind us, uh, you see the yacht club over our right hand shoulder. Yeah, right over Paul's, <laughs> Paul's shoulder. shoulder. There, there you go. <laughs> so it's great, you know. And then and we got uh, viewers inside uh, viewing. Um, they got a li- the live, stream. Live, live stream going on inside. So big shout out to them in there. Um, and 
Uh, we got us out here. A lot of volunteers, a lot of helpers. Yeah, a lot. Oh yes, and... yes. This uh, this regatta couldn't be done without all the support of everyone. You know, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's been this been in the works for many years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Two yeah. years they've been yeah, working we... hard on, on organizing this. Yep. Uh, went from uh, a little bit of a pipe dream to have this regatta in Connecticut. Yeah. First time. It, in, first honestly, time this has been in North America. It's in Connecticut. Yeah. Since and this venue. Years. I mean, yeah. So <laughs> this is great. We got a front row view. We got the water right in front of us, as you saw in the dro- overhead drone shot. You know, the, the yacht club's inside. You can see everything out in the water. And the mm-hmm. venue. I mean, I know that you guys spoke earlier, and you kind of had an overhead view of the uh, the, the bay and yeah. where the race course is. I mean, we can easily see it, which is great. You know, we're not sailing out miles offshore or anything, so this is really good. So, okay. So, so we just got a, a word that it's about 10 minutes that they're going to be... Okay. Okay, it looks like they're going to be about a 10-minute postponement. So they're going to be setting the course and seeing how this wind settles back in. And then they'll make a decision make on whether it. to start the race after that or yeah. see if it's going to fill in or what, what the wind's going to do. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we're working on getting you scores. Uh, race yep. committee said that they would put them up. We haven't seen them yet, but hopefully soon we'll we'll, we'll be getting those results up and we can post them and or show show you guys the results and how people stack up. Uh, my guess though is Gail Hauser. Yeah, I was kidding. That's, she, that's had a, a, <laughs> she had a two the first race yeah. and, a, and a one the second race. Uh, and yeah. here you can see, uh, you can see oh, Niantic yeah. Bay. You see Niantic right there in the middle, and it's nestled yeah. right between the Connecticut River and the Thames River yep. in New London. Connecticut yep. River coming in by Old Lyme and Correct. New London uh, Thames River there. Yep. And we get a little bit of a uh, a river right coming up from Waterford into the bay and we're about halfway down that bay um and that did you did you talk about current, did you talk but, about current yet because i know that we were uh, we talked at, about it at the beginning but uh, yeah, i think we okay. need to talk about it a little more yeah i mean we're now, it, so. it's it's going to be right in between the, the you know it's filling in right now until about what 4 30 yeah 4 30 um, high tides at 4 30 yep, so the tide is coming see, in all day right now and you can see the the um to the uh we're, left side we're, we're on the left side about halfway up right by crescent, crescent beach. park <laughs> Um, yep, in between Crescent Park and Crescent Beach, and uh, straight across, if you look right across the screen to us, uh, that's Millstone Power Plant to the east. A lot of buildings on that east side. Yep. So that's and that's where the breeze is kind of fun- funneling from. So you know there is a little bit of uh, you, you're coming off the land, so it's going to be mm-hmm. squirrely to begin with. Um, but yeah, you can see that, and um, the the depth is basically all the same in this in this bay area. You know the shore obviously gets a little bit shallower, but uh, it's pretty consistent but you do have that flow we saw the overhead view that flow from uh, east to west when the when it floods mm-hmm. into the mm-hmm. sound so that's um, what we're going to be seeing all day a little bit of that east to west flow correct Did you correct. talk about the uh, uh circular oh no yeah flow? yeah so yeah so, it's, it, when it fills in it's going to fill in kind of like a toilet bowl going counterclockwise okay so it's it's flooding in from the east of this the right side of the screen um and then coming in uh, and going counterclockwise around. Um, and then it looks like also, yeah, the uh, where I said Millstone was down to out of screen is uh, the point down to the lower left-hand portion of the screen. That's kind of where the east to west still flows without that toilet bowl. So it runs counterclockwise and then also east to west on the bottom. So, but where this race course is kind of set up, it's it's they're in that center of that toilet, right? Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so yeah, so that was uh, that was uh, you know we just looked at the uh, oh it looks like we're gonna be getting in some uh, on the water. Uh, yep, we got some on the water video right now. This is great. Who, who we got uh, calling in right now? We should have on water correspondents. Yes. Mike Rotier and. Uh, Simon Bertucci. Simon, a long-time Sunfish Stiller, has competed in many big events, North Americans, Worlds. He's been doing a lot of those events. And Mike Rotier, he's done a few himself. Yes. He's a UConn alum. UConn alum, yeah. Sailor, and that's 483. And, and Simon, you got to mention, Simon's from B. He sailed for BU. Yeah. Uh, he's a college. He's college yeah. BU. Yeah. He's a lot of college experience. And some good, let's see what they have to say. Yeah.
So we're having a little little audio connection issue right now. Um, but you can you can see the uh, we got the boats all. This is uh, I think they are on a, a chase boat right yeah, now. Yeah, they're on a chase boat. Yep. And you can kind of see they're right by the starting line, so all the boats are there. Um, eight oh one two two. That's yeah, but this is that's this is Lynn great. Randall right there. So you can see some of the sailors are starting to relax. They're they're letting some uh, you know stretch in. They're you know, yeah they're yeah they're, they they came, in the phone, they came in, in a little phone, man, they, so. maybe eating a little bit yeah yeah, yeah you know maybe they're taking a little break. Eating. They're two long races then. Yeah, they've been on the water already uh, two well, over two hours. You know, coming into this event, you know, you, this is a it's a big event. You know, you got a you're nervous, you got your nerves going, you're tight, you're ready to race, and uh, this is kind of like a little breather for them. They get to like catch up, you know, we had a 10.30 start right on the dot, um, now they kind of, it's 12.30 now, we got two races in, they're getting a little mm-hmm. relaxed a little bit, mm-hmm. but still in the game, you know, obviously yep. they're, they're, they're in it for the whole regatta. Um, but... Yeah, you just saw four three five five. That was Mary Jane Cressick. My mom actually, I got her out there today. Awesome, so, awesome. Uh, she, was, she was a little tentative about this regatta, but she's been doing so well so far. But it's like a giant family out there. Everyone, everyone's super helpful. She was, you know, we were talking to her last night. She was really excited, you know, and yeah, yeah, a little, a little nervous, but you know, we got a lot of friends out there. That kind of helps, you know. Absolutely, that really yeah. helps. You know, one thing about the Sunfish fleet, and especially the women's events, oh, are uh, just everyone's super so friendly, welcoming, so friendly. will help you. You could ask anyone for help, and they if they don't know what you need, they, they'll find the person who does. <laughs> yep, yes, so. yes, so a great a great group of ladies in this class. So while we're in this postponement, we're going to show you some Bolton, so Bolton. some footage from, yeah. from a Bolton Lake regatta right here in Connecticut, Connecticut yeah. uh, this past year. And 2017, two, uh, actually. Two years ago, actually. Yep. And uh, we'll uh, show you some footage from that. Uh, in, and, and we'll, we'll be, be back, back in a couple, couple minutes. minutes. Yeah, check it out.
So it looks like we're the race committee is getting ready to start another race. But while we, uh, talk, you know, before they do, we have on the club spot website results are posted for the first, uh, for some of the first ten people. And right now it looks like Gil Hauser actually pulled out the one one in the first two races, and so she's obviously in first place with only two points, followed right, closely right. by. Liza Genovese, Genovese, uh, who had a two-three. So those two sailors are, you know, top ones to watch for. Uh, rounding out the top five are Nancy, Nancy Jaywork, yeah. Marguerite, and Lee Parks. Parks. Um, so we'll see how those scores change as we've got to progress. Right, but, right. We're two races in. Yeah, you know, two 12. races in. So it's anyone's game, but you know, having having bullets helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keeping so, it down. Uh, second place in the in the second race was Lindsay Stockwell. So why don't we hear a couple words from her real quick? All right, it looks like uh, race committee is considering a possible delay. We'll see. They had about three minutes left in the sequence. Uh, Paul, you can see what the, the glass is there. Is trying to check it out, get some verification. We just charged up the drone, so we're ready to go for another race. And uh, we'll let you know as soon as we can. Right now, it looks like they're still bunched up. They could be milling around for the start, but... They are considering that, like I said, that postponement again. Wind has really started to die out here. I see some, you know, Tara trying to get out to the race course. She's really rocking her boat trying to get out there. Uh, use some kinetics just to get to the race course. And, um, like I said, a lot of people spread out, so they're... Uh, All right, we're going to send the drone out there to investigate, and we'll let you know as soon as we can about what the course is, what the situation is with postponement. It looks like they still have the class flag up, so that means they're still in sequence, and they haven't issued a postponement yet. But We'll see. They should be uh, approaching around one minute now, so they'll get, they're going to have to make a decision soon.
As of right now, it looks like they're going. Flags Class coming flag down. Class flag is coming down. Yeah. Now, it looks like they're starting. It's getting off the line right now. One person was over the over early, looks like. Oh, class flag's still up. Oh, the P flag? All right, let's go to camera view. There you go. You can see class flag is up right now. We have a couple boats that are over the line. We can hear race committee chattering about those boats and making sure that they know which boats are over early. Looks like 16, that's Jennifer Lane from Coast Guard. She's over the line now, so she's over early. We'll see if she can clear herself before the start. So as of right now, you can see just the class flag is up on the committee boat, on the far boat. Far boat is a committee boat. They're starting between that sunfish flag that's up now white with a pink sunfish on it and that flag on the close boat with the anchor on it. There, and that's the start. Looks like they're all clear. So right now they're starting. You can see some boats. There's that. That looks like Lindsay, 4704, Lindsay, first boat coming over in the on line. port. <laughs> she read the line on port. She looks like she's way out in front from this view. Maybe a slight shift uh, to the left. Uh, yeah, Marguerite back, and there, too. And she was too. able to be the first one to tack over. She's closely followed by Marguerite, as Paul said. And Marguerite, one of our top competitors, first couple races. And 4355, five, that's Mary Jane Crescent. That's my mom. <laughs> I can't believe it. She's up there in the top group. And Liza right behind him. And Jennifer Liza, making a move. Liza, again, top sailors. And, you know, top sailors so far today. And Jennifer Lane, a favorite from Coast Guard. Looks like Faye just tacked over. All right, we're going to go back to the drone footage now, get you some other angles. And you can see Lindsay Stockwell with that fantastic start. First one to tack over onto port, way out in front right now. The only thing that's going to, you know, with a start like that, you should be able to hold off the fleet, but when it's light wind like this, you don't know. You don't a puff know. could come Plus, in from excellent. the side. Come, exactly. She could, be, she could be leading the fleet in the wrong direction for current. Anything can happen. So she's going to have a job holding off this giant fleet. Yeah, she's sitting there right now. She's happy. She's in good position, but she's she's way off to the right. So she's hoping that it stays strong on the right side. And these boats that are staying to the left don't wind up passing her because of current, because of puffs, because of right. you know other other things altogether. It's hard to tell. Can you see if the wind? Does it look like the wind picked up at all? I think. I think it looks like it picked up a little bit at the top of the fleet. So we're hearing some chatter over the radio that uh, race committee is considering shortening shortening the course more because of the light wind.
Yeah, it looks like a lot of the competitors are going way right. They must see something over there. They like that tack. Right. The current's better over there. But we'll see if, if you know, if, if that's the better side, then they'll pay, you know, that'll pay off for them. But if it doesn't, then a lot of those competitors that stayed left will wind up way ahead. <laughs> I don't think there is anybody far left. So this is Lindsay Stockwell out in front again. It looks like she pulled ahead even further. Maybe that clear air off the start, she's getting some clear wind. She is way ahead right now on the right side. So maybe she she was in the right spot. But it looks like she she's, keeps going right. So yeah, they're all uh, going right. Nobody's tacked left yet. Oh, there's a few. There's a few, a few the, are starting to tack left. Oh, oh and there she goes. She, there's the tack. Everybody's See, going. Good, a nice roll in the light breeze. And the flatten, She's trying to keep speed with that roll tack. It looks like she is, she has a good lift on that now starboard tack. Hopefully she can make Liza it right, on one shot. And Liza's right there behind her. That's Liza in the background? Mm -hmm. So we'll see. She's hoping that the wind stays how it is. She can cross the fleet and be comfortably ahead. Yeah, Lindsay, she's been sailing since 2007. She started racing in 420s in junior programs um, before going to college where she picked up uh, sailing for the Yukon sailing team. And she started sailing Sunfish uh, about five years ago. And she's done a bunch of women's events, Third, in, she finished third place in Women's North American's Monantic. And she's been doing a lot of the, a lot of the regionals in New England. She just did Worlds. Uh, that's her world world sale from two years ago. So she ha she does have some experience in these big fleets, and uh, it definitely helps with course management, competitor management, and other things. So she is is you know very versed in a sunfish at this point. And it looks like 4820. That's uh, Sonia. Sonia's up there too, and we know she likes the lighter breeze. She's a m m very small skipper. So. Yeah. Let me flip over. Oh, sorry. And this is a Conley Sonia just crossing Liza. Sonia on starboard. Liza has to duck her. And because Liza's on port, but she uh, they want to go opposite directions and uh, avoid that conflict. And we'll see what happens. Whether Sonia comes out on top next time the two of them meet up at the mark or Liza comes out. Looks like the two of them are pretty close on Lindsay's heels now. As that, that's Lindsay again up in front. So, 
she joked around when she was telling us this morning. She said her name is pronounced like lizard, but uh, <laughs> we we know a little better than that. So. <laughs> And we've got, so it's uh, Marguerite in uh, fourth place by the looks of things. Gail um, in fifth. And we're coming up on the weather mark here, that uh, orange mark in the view. And you can see the fleet, it's a little tight up at the top. Lindsay's still out in front. She just crossed that other boat, and now she's tacking back onto starboard. Hopefully she, you know, thinking that she's on lay. And so hopefully she can make the mark this, shot, this time. Yeah, that's Liza. So we've got Lindsay, Liza, Sonia, Marguerite. Sonia. So Lindsay followed by Sonia and Liza. Marguerite. Na Marguerite. Um, Gail. Yeah. Some of the, you can so you can see who the top competitors are already in this fleet. Yeah, it's starting Gail to separate Housler, themselves. Even in the light wind, is just keeping pace. He runs again two bullets in the first two races, a one and a one. Marguerite up there in fourth place after the first two, so she's uh, holding good position. It looks a little dead out there right now. Um, Lindsay in first place coming up on the mark. And we got, uh, once again, Sonia, Sonia. And Gail and Marguerite and Liza behind her. Uh, if I'm Lindsay right now, I'm hoping that this race is not canceled until I, you know, until I can finish. Because I want that first place in the books. <laughs> But, there is a little bit of pressure here on the outside of the offset mark. Yeah, so. and even so, with, with, with boats this close behind her and this light wind, it's going to be hard to keep position on the downwind. But you if know, you the get there of, first, you've, yeah. got, you've got it, right? So you just need to get there before it goes away. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little wind out there coming at them. Hopefully it hits them soon. But... I know Lindsay's hoping that she can get a little clear air, get a little lead, and then hopefully stay in front of these other boats. When they all let their sails out, that's a massive wind block, and she, uh, you know, she's hoping that she can stay clear of that. Looks like she rounded that mark and is keeping her sail in, so that tells you a little something about the wind position right now.
And this is Lindsay rounding the offset right now. Uh, here she goes. She's letting out the sail for the downwind. And she's hoping that the wind fills in right about now so that she can get some good wind for the downwind and stay ahead of these other boats. When the wind fills in behind the fleet, you get a lot of those back competitors starting to move up and catch up to the other competitors as the wind fills in down the course. So Lindsay's really hoping that she can stay ahead of the rest of the fleet before the wind fills in behind them. Yeah, in second place right now, we have in that red and white sail, Sonia Dean. Sonia, the uh, class treasurer, um, good sailor, loves this light breeze. And you can see she's in second place doing really well. She's from uh, Harker's Island, North Carolina. So up a, a long way for her. But thankfully, we, we you know, set up a lot of loaner boats. She's got someone else's boat. And she uh, you know brought her own sail, set it up, and it's doing well. And there's Liza. Liza, once again, second after the first two races. Yeah, chapstick. <sighs> it looks like Mary Charles in 14. She's doing great. She's very experienced in this light breeze. She sails Bolton Lake, a lot of lake sailing, massive pollog. Uh, so she knows what she's doing when the wind dies out like this. Right now, they don't have a lot of chops. So in a lot of ways, this is a little bit like lake sailing. And here we have 4860. That's Kimmy Jackman from uh, Yukon Sailing. Sails with Bantam Lake Sailing Club. Closely followed by 5785 Lee Parks. Those two sail against each other a lot in New England. Both doing the circuit. Wakwaka, Brigada, Hyannis. They sail against each other in a lot of the same regattas. So they are old competitors. Know each other well. And that's 4729. That's Faye Flam from Massapoa Yacht Club. She started sailing a laser back in 1996. And since then, you know, picked up Sunfish in 2018. Been only been sailing Sunfish for a year or so. But, you know, she's coming out to big regattas, having a good time, meeting people. Likes the class, likes the people. Really sees the value of a Sunfish. And I mean, she... She's certainly proud. She, she, her, her, one of, one of her best moments of sailing is the fact that she uh, survived 20 years of laser sailing. So she's happy to be part of the Sunfish fleet. But
it's tough with this light breeze. All these skippers, it, it can be frustrating for you. Uh, you know, you're in the boat. You're trying to keep the boat steady. It's hard to keep the sail full. You got to heel to lure to keep the sail full. And it can get frustrating. You're like, where's my win? I see that person's going faster. I, why aren't I going that fast? And you, the tendency is to try to fidget to move and try to get the boat moving again. But... In reality, sometimes the best thing for these sailors is to maintain focus, stay in the boat, calmly decide where you're going to go next, work towards it slowly. It's a slow, steady movement to try to keep speed with the boat. Look around behind you. Where do you think the wind's going to fill in from? Where, uh, where should I be on the race course? What am I going to do to make sure that I get the wind first? I have my boat speed going fast and can keep the boat moving forward. Let's see, I think this is, these are a couple of the leaders right now. It looks like Lindsey Stockwell rounding the lured gate, followed closely by a bunch of the other people. It looks like that leading group really opened up a big gap between them and the second group. And if, if the wind seems to, if the wind winds up filling in here, you never know. We we could be running into a time limit issue where the top sailors finish and and the second group of sailors don't have enough time to finish the race before time limit expires. Yep, that's Lindsey Stockwell just tacked over back onto port, followed closely by uh, our other leaders, and we got six zero eight five eight. That's uh, that's. Gail Hausler, she's in sixth place right now, so she can't be happy with that after the first two races, but I know she, she doesn't love the heavy wind, so, uh, I mean, she doesn't love the light wind, so, um, so I, you know, maybe she's not too upset with it and just hoping to hold position through this light breeze, hold right. it out till tomorrow when the wind's supposed to pick up a little bit more. Yeah, we have six boats completely separated from the rest of the fleet. Yeah, six boats. You really see the separation between those top people oh. right now. They well, they some... caught that breeze that we were talking about. That that, that pressure on the, the pressure, oh. and then the rest of the fleet is stuck at the mark. Yeah. So right now, if I'm in that top few boats, the top six, I would be pissed if they posted oh, if yeah. they cancel the race. <laughs> so if I'm Lindsay, if I'm Marguerite, if I'm Sonia, you're hoping against all hope that. They don't cancel. They let you finish the race. And you make the time limit. Time limit expire for the other people. So it looks like right now race committee is considering some creative options to make sure or to try to get everyone to be able to finish this race. Uh, one thing they're talking about right now is doing some upwind modified finish, shorten the last leg here, and uh, see if we can get finishes across. But we'll we'll let you know as soon as we can about what they decide. Right here you see 4830. That's Nancy Jaywork. Nancy having a good regatta so far. She's in third after the first two races with a 3-4. And she's in pretty good position here. You can see Lindsay in the top left corner. And you can see these top boats have already rounded the leeward mark and are going upwind. And the rest of the fleet is sitting up at the windward mark. The rest of the fleet, the wind died on them. Those top few boats kept the wind, were able to keep the wind, the whole down wind, ran, running with the wind, and then break away from the rest of the fleet. So we're seeing, you can see behind the group right here, right here upwind of all the group, you see a dark spot on the water. That's a big gust from the east. Hopefully it'll fill in, fill in across the whole fleet and allow everyone to hopefully finish within the time limit. That would be ideal. You don't, you know, it's always tough to see your someone working all race, working hard, trying to right. get to the finish, and then the time limit expires right before they get there. So hopefully this wind will really fill in, let them get across the finish line uh, within the time limit, and get some more competitive racing in. You know, the good thing about this, today might be a little bit of light wind. We'll get the people who... Uh, 
who like the light wind will get a little shot doing well and then tomorrow we'll see uh some a little more in, breeze a little bit more breeze yeah. um and and get some different conditions that will challenge some yeah. different people let some other sailors move to the front yeah maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> so can you see that yeah. Is it really filling in? Not yet. It's not get. It's not get. It's not getting there. You think it's coming, then it stops. Yeah. So it looks like this easterly that we're seeing behind it. It looks like it's coming, and Paul was saying that. Yeah. It's just not reaching them. It's not. It's not getting there. Yeah. It looks like it's coming, and then it just stops right before him right now. So you can see that they're all just still drifting around over there. And these top boats, too, they're just sitting in the water waiting for the wind to fill in. It's, it looks like it's everywhere but on the race course right now. <laughs> it's close to us <laughs> exactly. by the Yacht Club. It's further out over by the Millstone Power Plant on the far side. It's, it's out at the mouth of the bay, but it's just not right there on the course. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's how it happens at these regattas. <laughs> You can do everything you possibly can, and then the wind doesn't cooperate. Right. We do have a little movement around the mark. They, are, they do seem to have uh, some pressure over there getting away from the, uh, the mark, so that's good. So in this light wind, uh, Bill... Bill Parkhurst had a question on the comment stream. He, he asked, what are they using to hold out the sail downwind? Um, so a lot of these sunfish, they have a bungee attached to their centerboard. So some some sailors will actually rig that bungee around the front of their sail, the and that'll help hold out the sail a little bit when, when you lose pressure downwind. Right. And Which, others use the, the line, the leftover halyard line, tie it in, pull it in. Yep. Some people use that. They'll, they'll actually use their, their hand to hold out manually, hold out the sail to help that sail fill just from wind and not have to fight the weight of the spars. Um, and, and you can see in this light wind, a lot of them might also just be sitting on the leeward side to help keep that the boom out yep. do a little bit of gravity sailing to keep that sail full and that way the, the wind that does hit their sail doesn't the energy isn't dissipated by keeping the sail full it's it, 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 more of it, it goes it, towards it, forward momentum them forward yeah So right now we're standing like Paul's standing up. He's getting a good view of the race course. Right, you can see him the headset and this everything. This wind is crazy. <laughs> Just getting a good view of that wind, trying to see where it's going to fill in from next. You know, and right now he's saying the same thing. It's just not filling in on the race course. The downwind boats seem to have a little bit of pressure. The the leading pack on the upwind side um, yeah, are barely I mean, moving. It makes sense up the wind. The boats that are further downwind already, that those leaders in the race are, are struggling to find breeze, whereas everyone else, uh, you know, maybe that wind is filling in behind them. Yeah, you can see this wind f trying to get there from behind them. It looks like it hasn't quite, but it's right there. And you can see it perfectly on this drone footage. You see that dark spot over to the left of the power plant and to the right of the power plant. And it looks like some of these sailors are starting to pick up a little bit of yeah, wind. There's a little momentum going on here.
So you can see a nice pa panorama of the whole bay as we pan around there. And uh, that right, you know, that's the opposite corner from Millstone. Uh, we're just to the right of the view right now. And uh, halfway up the bay side, th yep, there's, you see those buildings. We're just to the right of those buildings. There's a beach. And we're right there on the pier on the breakwater and you see the umpire boat there the whole fleet everyone hopefully those the stragglers at the back are getting a little bit of a breeze and they can use that to catch yeah, that's up a to good the point. rest of the fleet yep good point So Paul's selling, saying that he's uh, seeing Lindsay still make full forward, forward progress. progress. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, if I was her, I I would be hoping hoping that it does not that it's not a an abandoned race. Right. Because that would be a shame at this point. That first place person is always uh, always feels a little bit screwed by uh, <laughs> abandoned races. You know, so. The, the back of the the back of the pack has definitely got some breeze. They're starting to move forward, so things are breaking up a little bit. Looks like they have a little bit of a northern northerly um, hitting them. So, so right now you see in the northerly fighting the easterly, and that's yeah. what we're getting here. They're getting caught in the middle. Right. So as we talked about earlier, between the races, we uh, forecast was for the north in the morning, slowly dying out, shifting east. And as it shifted east, we saw the forecast die out in terms of wind. We saw lows of three, gusting four. And so I guess we're seeing a little bit of that now. And as the wind shifts, we're seeing, uh, two, it looks like we're seeing two different puffs two different gusts fighting with each other for which one's going to win out right now and they're got the kind of kind of the race course is getting caught in the middle and uh th that you know with two different two different puffs fighting with each other they kind of just die out where they, they connect where they uh where they touch and creates this little lull in the middle and that's where, where the, a lot of these racers are sitting in here you can see some of these upwind boats like Marguerite and 71 trying to s snake through all these boats that are clumped up going downwind. And with this many boats, look, you got you got 10 boats right here in this frame going downwind. Giant wall blocking the wind. Marguerite managed to snake through, but we got this other the the red white and uh, the red and white sail. I think that's Sonia and the white sail. They have to snake through this group of sailors yeah. and hold pace going upwind. And it looks like we're getting word from the race committee that they're going to be finishing at the upwind mark. That would be great. So that'll be, uh, you know, for, for that top group, for Lindsay, for uh, Nancy for J work, yeah. for Liza, they got to be happy that there's not going to be an abandonment and instead they'll finish up at the upwind mark an upwind finish and we'll see what happens hopefully the rest of the fleet has enough time gets, once his top gets it top sailors yeah. finish to finish themselves I think we have a time limit of uh, thir 30 minutes I believe. is it 30 I'll or 45 that. we'll have to check that I'll, we'll, we'll check that but it, usually it's it's about 30 minutes after the first finisher ah, finishes yeah. so we will uh, we'll verify that and let you, keep you guys up to date. Here, really, you can see the gusts coming in. The whole fleet is now going to start accelerating. These top sailors are moving now. They have wind and a nice upwind finish. You can see right here, Lindsay and this red and white sail. Oh, no, it looks like 
the red and white sails actually passing Lindsay. I think that must be uh, Nancy J work or yeah, I, I don't know. Let's check the binoculars. See if we can I can't see, see the it's, it's got to be Sonia. I think she was the one that was closest up there. And Lindsay going back to let's see. Lindsay tacking back onto starboard. You see, maybe that was the right move. And it does. It looks like it was uh, 4830. That's Nancy J work. So Nancy yeah. J work tacking onto port. And Lindsay on starboard. Let's see if Lindsay can pass Nancy again. We got a little bit of attacking duel here at the top of the fleet. And it actually looks like Lindsay's going to pass Nancy again. Lindsay just passed by. Uh, Nancy the previous tack and then looks like she pulled it uh, pulled a good move read the finish line well and uh, it looks like she held the lead there and uh, we'll see how they finish here tack back onto port in this breeze it can be tough to tack so you gotta make sure you have a good tack in order to keep speed especially right. when it's that close of a race Get that power after you've tacked back into the sail. We'll see where's. And there she goes. What the finish line is? There it is, and that's the finish right between that sunfish flag on the committee boat and the pin, the orange pin. So it looks like Lindsay's indeed gonna win that race. Good for her. I gotta say. Yeah. Good, good race all Way around, right from the yeah. start. Followed closely by Nancy Jaywork. But Lindsay Stockwell, right off the start, she read the shift right away, was the first one to come over onto the port tack, shot out at the beginning, and managed to hold her lead the entire race. Fantastic right. job. And it looks like we're going to have a pretty good duel for uh, third and fourth place here between uh, Sonia and uh, Marguerite. So that's Sonia in the red and white? Yeah. And which one's Marguerite? Uh, are we looking the white at? sail right on the outside. Fourteen is Mary, yeah. There. Yeah, with this drone footage, you can really see the wind across the whole course. And it looks like, uh, it's hard to tell, but those could be some current lines on the course. You see uh, w uh, the little streaks going down the middle of the wind here. Yeah, yeah. They could be some current. So I'm wondering how that's affecting them. These top sailors are going towards the right side of the course. Um so maybe that side of the course is a little bit more favorable for current. I don't know. You've got K Gail Hauser coming in, coming in hot. And Gail was to outside the top five at the lured mark, so she's having a good leg if she's catching up. Here Looks like we the have rest of the fleet. I think we have Marguerite finishing there. The mark, and now they're going upwind. And you can see it's tough to find some clear air when there's this many boats on the course. So we and just especially saw, when they're clumped up like that. Yeah, and we just saw Marguerite finish third, I think. And uh, 
Gale tacking back over, but so it looks like uh, Sonia is going to come in on fourth. The question will be whether um, Liza comes in or uh, Gail. Yeah, and we got updated results from the race committee for races one and two. If you want, you can check out the comment section. I just posted the updated results in the comment section. And it looks like Liza's crossed the finish line there. And Liza, once again, uh, second after the first two races. The fourth place, we'll see how that helps her or hurts her or nothing, you know, neutral for her. But uh, she's selling a fantastic regatta. Four three four three three. Yeah, that's, that's Yeah, okay. All right, the next group of finishers will be, uh, looks like Gail, uh, Jennifer, I think, um, Faye. We had top 10 after the first race. We had Gail Hausler with two points, Liza with five, Nancy Jayrick with seven, Marguerite Kohler with with 12, <laughs> Lindsay Stockwell with 15, and Lee Parks with 15 as well. L Lindsay has the tiebreaker. Sonia in seventh. Uh, with 16, Jennifer Lane in 8th with 17, and Marta, Marta Kloos 
in ninth with 20 points and Kimmy in 10th with 21. So it's a close race between uh, those top boats. Not many points that's separating them. This next group is having a real tough time getting across that finish line. Looks like Gail is just about to finish. Yeah, it looks like the wind's died a little bit on the course again. People are struggling to get up wind to get to the finish line. Hopefully we don't have any issues with t with time limit expiring, but r right now we're about eight minutes into that time limit, nine minutes into that time limit. Four seven two nine. That's Faye Flam again from uh, uh, Massapoag, and she's approaching the finish now. Yeah, but that, that approach has been deceiving. Um, Gail got into that, came came on the finish at the same tack, and got stuck there for a while. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if. Oh, uh, unfortunately, it looks like the time limit is actually 15 minutes after the first finisher. Three minutes. So it looks like we have about three minutes left on the uh, time limit. So we'll see who can get across. Six. As Faye finishing now. Is that Mary Charles, I think, just finished as well. 14? Yeah, 14. Great race for her. Fantastic job. Two minutes left. We'll see if we can sneak a few more finishes in here. And that looks like it's Bernadette to Leward, uh luffing her sail. She's got to try and get across that finish line pretty quick before the time limit expires, but five, she'll three, do it. And that's 53100. That's Ursula Olsen. Four, four, one, one. Or, yeah, that's Bernadette, followed closely by four eight six zero. That's four eight six zero. That's Kimmy Jackman, out of Bantam four, Lake. Eight, seven, two. Four eight seven two. Uh, four eight seven two is Kimmy Jackman. Yeah, that's Marta, I think. In, that's Marta. Uh, four eight six zero. Oh, yeah, thanks for the thanks. And she's uh, yeah, she's over. So that the two of them friends about, on the circuit. Yeah. Similar sales and. Yeah, Finishing I would agree. Together. And 
and that's 81333, that's Tara Schweinsfire from uh, Yukon. She actually sailed in between the races and got lucky. She was able to make this start. She got lucky they had a postponement before this start. They were able and to she could get back out. Make it yeah. back out. Yeah. yeah. And that's 16, that's Jennifer Lane just crossing now. How much time left? 30 seconds from now. Yeah, about 30 seconds left on the time limit, so this will probably be the last finisher right here. 76039. That's 76039, that's Emily Wagner out of Davis nice. Island in Florida. She's been sailing exactly one year. And had her first sunfish lesson last October and fell in love. But since then, she's been coming to a lot of events. And as you can see so far today, her results are pretty good. And the dedication, the enthusiasm, the willingness to learn, you know, her results, she's beating about half the fleet. And it's also the fast boat I gave her. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. using my hole. <laughs> Paul, Loney or the fast boat. And we're five, five seconds, seconds to TLE. I don't, so, I don't see anybody like, there. It looks like that's going to be it for the finishers of this race. Oh, that's got to be so painful and for the next boat. Yeah, that's there tough it for is. all those boats. Yeah, if you were in the back of that pack, you're happy as a TLE because it doesn't penalize you. But if you're that next boat, that that <laughs> really disappointing. Right. Because all those other people gain points on you that you... Will, oh, that you, in some ways, from some perspective, that you earn. Right. And we've confirmation from the race committee. Time limit has expired, and we will. Uh, you know, and they're co what they're postponing it for the day. Sounds like we're uh, bringing in the race, uh, racing for the day, or at least for now. At least for now. Uh, just to finish both. Oh, okay, sorry. All we right, might, so we're still we might be incorrect it. on that. <laughs> <laughs> they're taking down the finish boat flag and they're going back down to the lured mark to start the next races. And it does look like the uh, wind is filled in a little bit within the course, so uh, we might be able to get another one off. Hopefully, don't we, hope, hopefully we don't run into similar issues <laughs> with the time limit and the wind dying and everything else. Do you want to go somewhere? The anchor boat, uh, finish boat and, uh, you know, in the meantime, we'll put up an interview from yesterday from Susan St. John and her thoughts on the regatta. We got Susan here right here, and she's going to tell us a little about her boat name. <laughs> My favorite name. Um, Hey guys, this is Jake from Next Level Water Sports, and we're here today to introduce the newest addition to our fleet, the e -foil.
felt like you're flying, like you first were just riding and you can kind of hear the friction of the water like normal and then next thing it goes up just a little bit quiet and you're just getting like raised up above the water and got to balance. Sure, how was it to learn? Um, it was really easy actually. You just use those three steps to go on your stomach, your knees, and then stand up. And once you're up, it feels really similar to a normal hydrofoil. And I was able to get up pretty quickly because you, you feel so balanced. And then just every ride, you're learning a little bit more about the throttle and about the balance. And I just felt more confident like every time. It's like riding a magic carpet. For more info on the e-foil, lessons, or tours, visit us at nlwatersports.com. Here. She came with some like people all the way from Chicago. From Chicago, like oh. Fluffy Club. Okay. You represent there. Yeah. So you, is this you, or did you come out with a group, or just me? Just you. Wow. We okay. Boat on the truck and headed east. Headed east. Yeah. <laughs> How long of a drive was that? Uh, two days, two big days. So okay. Like eighteen hours. Okay. Well, long. It. Are you happy to be?
So it looks like the race yeah. committee is uh, picking up marks and they're getting trying to get ready for shifts and see, you know, as soon as something comes in, they can react to it and, uh, you know, change the course as necessary and uh, right. you know, be ready for it. Yeah, because it's, it's right now, it's, it's all, you know, all over the place. They got to really get it set before they can do anything mm-hmm. further. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get that race at least finished. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're doing a good job uh, just being on a standby right now in a whole pattern, as we can see. All right, so it looks like they'll be uh, they'll be shortening the course by about half uh, going into these last couple of races, and they're gonna try to get a couple more off in the light breeze. But we'll see what happens. Um, they're getting the mark set, they're getting the people set, and we'll see in a minute how it plays out. All right, guys, we're going to uh, refresh the stream while, while we take this opportunity. Bear with us and, uh, you know, stay, stay yeah, on the and, line. And keep the, hey, and we got the message board for everyone to interact with each other. You know, everyone that's following along uh, their computer or their phone, they can type right in and have a little conversation, see how the regatta is going thus far, uh, give your opinion. And, uh, and we'll, we'll be see right, you in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right. 